What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku. As well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. Boss Man Show, front of the show, one of the Minnesota, the St. Thomas Tommy's coach, Johnny Tower, been the Boss Man Show, see him in his nice office there, been in the background. Coach Tower, good to talk to you again. Hey, great to see you. Appreciate being back on the show. Last time, two years ago, we had just made the jump from D3 to D1. We hadn't played any games yet, so um, appreciate you having me back on the show. Excited to catch up. Yes, sir. Well, Coach, let me ask you, man, you're going to year 13 It's it's St. It's St. Thomas, man, and he, how does it feel being at someone 13 years, knowing the business that you and I both in where it's so fickle is turnover all the time? Yeah, I'm I'm blessed. Um, you know, and really, in some ways, it's year 28. I was an assistant here for 11 years. I played here uh, as an undergrad student. So this is this is a place, um, you know, that that is home for me and feel really fortunate. We've been blessed to have so many great kids, um, have had a lot of success and really excited about this D3 to D1 journey. You know, in D3, we won a couple national titles and we made the jump a couple of years ago. Last time we talked, um, you know, that first year, we ended up starting the same five kids in division one that we had the year, six months earlier in division three. So it, it's been, uh, it's been just a, a really exciting time around St. Thomas, but I love coaching here. And um, like you said, this is, this is a wild business, uh, probably never wilder than now in the NCAA. And so um, really feel fortunate. And, and Coach, I'm going to ask you, as you go to get through this transition, what has changed for, for, for the program, per se, as you go through this period of transition through these four years to become a full D1 member? Yeah, that's a great question. I um, I like to say that the things that didn't change, my office, the gym that I coach in, my five-minute commute every day, the great kids we get to work with, and literally everything else did, right? So my business card looks the same. My office looks the same. But everything else did from scheduling to recruiting to how are we competing in the Summit League and the D1 teams that we're playing. I mean, it, it is it is a lot of different stuff, but it's also really exciting. You know, this there's a reason this has never been done before. And so we're getting this opportunity to sort of chart our own course. Um, so it's been 
it, you know, it's been uh, really exciting. Certainly some days are exhausting, but when you, when you just sit back and you look at what we've been able to accomplish, but I also think where we're headed, um, you know, second year, we won 19 games in our second year, division one, and we were still starting three or four of our former division three players last year. Um, we got a $176 million arena that's going to open in two years. And so um, I think the way we've been able to transition from D3 to D D1 at this point um, gives us a lot of hope. There's a lot of work to, to do and, and a lot of great teams out there. We know that, but, um, but we're really proud of our guys and, and looking forward to the future. Yes, and get that get that able to compete because you, you know I don't know Coach Saab. A lot of guys in D three they, they can be D one anyway. So getting to actually be a D, be a D three player and play at D one and compete with nineteen games for you guys because that's felt like those young men and your you and your staff are finding young men who can play at any level who really has played a game of basketball the right way. Well, you know, you hit it on the head. Certainly there are things, and we know as we continue into Division One, we're going to have to get bigger, stronger, more athletic. Like there. There have been challenges these first couple of years where we've had to mitigate some of those things. Um, we were probably the worst offensive rebounding team in the country that first year. We never turned the ball over. We took a lot of threes. We played the way we had to play, um, and our guys embraced that, and they had been used to our winning culture, right? So those five guys we started in that first season, I think they had lost a total of eight games in three years in Division Three. So not only were they really good players, but they're tough-minded, and they were used to winning. I mean, two of them are going overseas to play pro ball this year. Um, one of them, Parker Bjorklund, is a six-year senior for us, so he's back now, uh, was all-conference last year. And so, I, you know, I think it's been one of those things that when you're, when you're trying to lead a program through it, more than anything, uh, you lean on those core values that, you, that got you success in the first place. And that's, that's really what we've done is we've relied on guys who love the game, they love each other, um, and they're really, really competitive. And uh, we've been bringing in some really good young Division I recruits. So when you blend those two, um, so far, the early returns have been have been good. And coach, do you feel like with the portal the way it is and the NIL the way it is at the higher major level or the big major level, that you've been getting the quality high school young man to get in your program and really develop him and build him up in in, in some league play? You know, it's about being older, yes, but also having some guys in the pipeline to replace those older guys once they graduate and go play overseas. No question. And I think that's that's part of the process that we're still in. You talked about that five year transition period. Um, last year, we had the freshman of the year in the summit league, Andrew Rohde. So we had these four still returning divisions, former division three players. Um, Andrew's freshman league of the summit year, league. Now he's at the University of Virginia. And so he's playing for for them. And, and that wasn't necessarily by design. We would have loved to have him back, but we're also excited for him and the opportunity he has. And so, you know, like I always say, we we can only coach the guys from our campus. Andrew had an unbelievable freshman year. We had other freshmen who made big contributions, and we think we're going to again. And, and so year over year, I think the what you allude to is NCAA basketball is different than it's ever been before, right? With NIL and the transfer portal, it is a more transient profession, and thinking that all of your guys are going to be there four years, th that's simply not reality anymore. That said, I do think we're at St. Thomas where we're an unbelievable school. We get a lot of hometown kids. And I think we're going to keep a lot of kids for four years. And that's really how we're going to build our program is largely through high school kids who say, I want to get a degree and be a part of this story of this little division three school. That's actually not that little and and now going to division one. And coach also, like you said, coach, uh, leadership pieces as well. And I know, I know how much you care about, you know, St. Thomas, Tommy, you've been there over, over 28 years. And when you talk to a young man, you're talking to somebody who's been in their shoes. Who will who will step been step foot if they come in their shoes? So talk about that relationship piece building with those these young men, especially more when it's become more transactional. But I feel like if a young man's relationship with you and knows you really care about him, he would stay rather than go if it's all things have been equal. No quite and I love the way you put it, all things being equal. And that's that's our job is to create conditions for our guys to be successful, not just on the court, but in the classroom and the community as they develop as human beings. Um and I think what you're also referencing, I, I can talk to parents when we're recruiting them. And I was here as an 18 year old freshman longer ago than I'd like to admit, but I fall of 91, I was a freshman here. Here we are 32 years later and 28 of those 32 years I've spent at St. Thomas. And so it doesn't mean I'm going to be here forever, but I can look parents in the eye and say, listen, I've been here for the last 24 years. I taught psychology for 21 years. I've coached basketball for 24 years. I'm not looking to go anywhere else. And I love this place. And I think as a parent, 
that means a lot to know like, hey, I think this is going to be the coaching staff that's going to work with my son for the next four years because you and I know there's nothing wrong with transferring. There's certain times that that's the right thing to do, but all things being equal, to quote you, if everything's equal and you can stay in the same place for four years and grow and develop and, and as much as anything, develop, develop friendships, relationships that these are the guys that'll be in your wedding. These are going to be guys that you're connected to in the business community. Those are things that are hard to obtain in college and to really build if you're jumping around from school to school. And so I think we're we're certainly hoping to build something at St. Thomas that has that kind of staying power where guys simply want to be here for all those reasons. And coach, I, I had this simple experience for me on the football side in 08. Uh, Georgia State just got football. And I'm like, I'm a senior here. I've been at Tennessee State all these years. I'm not coming home just, just, just to come back home. So, guys, so I chose what I already knew, the relations I had over – coming to come back home for one final year. Like, like no. Yeah. So yeah. I had experience myself. I decided to stick where I met and not just because it seemed good to take that opportunity because I feel like I've been with these guys. This will be my fifth year here. And, you know, why I'm going to go here and play with a new – just getting football for the first time. So just because at home, I'm not, I wasn't doing that. <laughs> Love it. No, you're, you're right. And so much of our culture, right, where – um, you know, the, the Instagram culture and you look at photos online and everything looks great. But at the end of the day, you got to think about your situation, our guy's situation, everybody in the world is like, hey, where day after day after day after day, am I going to wake up really excited to go to weightlifting, to go to class, to be excited to be in the locker room with these guys that I trust that are going to play the right way. And, you know, you think about college, it's a it's a small window in life. And yet it can really be transformative, right, with how we all grow and develop. And that's what's kept me in college coaching for so long is you see 18-year-olds and how they are when they come in and what they're like when they leave and then what they go on to do beyond that. And, and I just think, you know, more than anything, um, if all things are equal, if you find a school you love, it's a good spot to be because you're going to have people who look out for you and you're going to have friends for life that, um, you know, during those difficult times that we all know we're going to have, who are you going to lean on? And oftentimes it's, it's those teammates. I know for me, I've had five or six of my closest 10 friends in the world are college teammates. And that was 30 years ago. But so those, are coach. Guys, those are the guys that you trust because you've been through battles with them. You've been through ups and downs and, and you all went through that stuff together when you were 18, 19, 20, that that forms a bond and a, um, you know, really a relationship that you're going to be able to be there for one another throughout. And so, um, it's, it's, it's fun hearing your perspective because I think that is what makes college athletics so unique. Yes. Like I'm going to Memphis, um, tomorrow for a game and for TSU plays for Pine Bluff in Memphis. I'll see a lot of my teammates who I haven't seen in some years, but it'll be like old times because we have to say we have that bond, that rapport, that one is because we went to those 5 a.m. sprints and running them stairs together, you know. So all all those things that, that we did together, Coach, they like it's like it's never never happened. We all we all boys, like like you said today, every every day. <laughs> and you pick up like it was, yeah, it, it was yesterday. I think that's the other thing you hit on that you know college sports is so special. It's hard, right? There there are times those 5 a.m. wake up calls and the late night bus rides and all the stuff in between. It's not always easy, but you think about when you're done with college and what are you going to go do? Well. How often do corporations come to us and say, we want your senior leaders? Like, yeah, we want straight A students, but the reality is we don't know if a straight A student can work well with others. If you've got a captain who's a good student, but he's been through some injuries, he's been through wins, he's been through losses, he's led young guys. Like, those are the things that every single organization in the, in the world wants in terms of leaders. And so I think that's still, to me, the college sports, winning and losing matters. It matters a lot. We all know that. But beyond that, there are so many other benefits of being a college athlete and how that can help you develop for the long term. And, Coach, I tell any young man, look at me, you know, I went to NFL training camp three times. Didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a great career or nothing, but I made, I was a training camp and did what I did. But having my MBA, it helps me with my radio side. Like, my degree is not in communication. It's, it's business, right? So it's like for me, the off the air stuff for me is easy, like because I because I, I had my degree. The on air stuff that I played basketball, I played football, baseball. That's easy to me. That's, that's like back in my head stuff. But knowing how to do one of my accounting, how to market, how to hire people, how to do HR software, that came from my business degree. If I didn't yeah. go to school and get and go get my MBA, 
I wouldn't be able to do what I do off the air what I can do on the air. Yeah, no, and that, hey, that's the foundation, right? When you talk about that and and really when people talk about student athletes and sometimes I think it's used as a cliche, but you think about a student athlete, like over those four or five years, if athletes use that time to not just be great athletes, but truly grow who they are as a person and to enhance their brain in the way they think and to network with people, like you're going to come out of there and there are going to be some people who knew you as an athlete, but what they're going to respect about you now is your business acumen. And you put those two things together and you know, that that's where I think it's so invaluable. You're right. And coach, you're, you're so right. Because a lot of guys say, I thought you was a wide receiver. I was now <laughs> I'm a, radio, I'm a radio host. Yes. And I'm on the, I'm on the, so, so yes, you're right. Coach that recognition of knowing Simi from being on the field, the speedster that's from Atlanta to now radio guy, 14 years in doing my own thing. It's like the transition has been great for me, coach. I tell young men, if I can do it, you can too. Now, I didn't get to reach about the goal I wanted to reach with the NFL, being have a full career, but athletics gave me opportunity to still be around it by using my degree, being at been in that fifth year. Well, and and you know, to your point, you know, we use the analogy the ball is going to stop bouncing for everybody at some point. So even if somebody goes into the NFL or the NBA, at some point they're going to wake up in their life, look in the mirror, and they're no longer a wide receiver or a point guard, right? Like those days are gone. And I don't care how much money somebody made. I don't care how many accolades they have. Like you got to have other stuff in you, in your heart, in your soul, where you're going to have a life full of passion and joy. And um, you're clearly doing that, doing something you love to do. I'm fortunate to get to do it. And I think that's that's certainly one of our goals, probably our primary long-term goal for all our players is look at when you're done playing here, you've got to have a foundation of skills and a spirit that wants to go out and enjoy life and make things better for other people. And Ben, where you were at the Minneapolis St. Paul area, internships for, for your young men. Like with the with now back when when we and you played with no hour limits per se, but now with now with the limits of the hours, you can go do an internship and network and work on preparing yourself for that after when the ball starts bouncing because that's so important to me. I feel like that's because you gotta get you have to get a get a degree. We all are gonna be millionaires. We get that that degree will give you that foundation, do whatever you want to do in life after we stop being athletes. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think, I think that's a, uh, the way you put it is, is wonderful because the balance we all try to strike, right. Is how do we make sure that we're putting the best team on the court we can and developing these guys on the court, but also actually pushing them and encouraging them to major in the discipline they want to major in and get an internship or do research in the things that they want to do, because you and I both know there are some athletes out there that don't put that do that. And sometimes that's a coaching staff, right? Sometimes that's a coaching staff saying all you're doing is sports. And that's a real disservice. We just got done with a trip to Italy, um, which was awesome. And, and on the way out there, we spent two days in New York city and we walked around areas, New York stock exchange, some different companies and had a couple speakers and the impression they left on our, our players was really powerful because it was, it was more about how the skills you're learning in basketball and on this team are going to serve you well later in life. And it wasn't about you're all going to be pro basketball players. You, the stats would bear that out. Not many people end up playing the NBA. So if that happens, great. And even then, you better have a good business background and understand how to handle things. But if it doesn't happen, what's going to be the other thing that's going to keep fueling you um, day after day? And so that trip, that trip was pretty special because our guys got to play in Italy. We played some good pro teams over there. And some of our guys want to go play professionally. But there's also a little eye-opening, like, Pro basketball overseas isn't as sexy as some people think it is, right? Like it's not, mm -hmm. it's not all the glamour. Certainly there's wonderful parts of it, but I think back to the gyms we played in, how hot they were, 105 degrees, no air conditioning, you know, two refs, slippery floors. And it was awesome. It would, don't get me wrong, but it was, it was, okay, this is not waking up playing on the Target Center in Minneapolis. This is a different lifestyle if you want to do it. And um, so for me, that was a great awakening. Whatever they want to do, we want to help them educate themselves yeah. on what's best for them and coach i thought that trip to italy was good also to for team building and team bonding and i feel like that's the thing with football we don't get to take foreign trips per se it's like we just don't stuff like we can't do that so but for basketball you can i feel like that's a good way to, way to bond and become one because diversity will come but if you're already together already holding each other accountable if i had to be coached to effort and energy and you're already one and you get it done in August, 
it's good when it, when it happens in January, February, February. Hopefully not not not, not in March. <laughs> right. No. Hey, that it's it was incredible because it was like eleven days together. And you think about it, how many how many guys would you spend eleven days in Europe when it's a hundred degrees and you're waiting in line to go sightsee at the Colosseum or Vatican City? Like you're doing a lot of stuff that's tiring, right? And at the end of it, just the team bonding of being together for that long. Um, but then you add in the games, you add in things that guys had never experienced and they're doing that together. And it really was, uh, I would say it was a pretty magical experience that our guys will never forget because they were able to do that all together, learn so much educationally and culturally um, while competing. But honestly, basketball was kind of an afterthought when I look at all the other things that we did on the trip. Um, it was it was something that I think none of us will ever forget. And we're certainly very grateful. We had an alum, um, Brett Keith, who's a 1994 alum from St. Thomas, and he he's fallen in love with our program. And he funded that trip to Italy for our entire team, which, you know, you, again, you talk about paying it forward. Our guys are acutely aware of how generous this was. And hopefully someday they're in a position to give some young people a similar type of opportunity. So I think uh, just holistically, it was a, a really, really special opportunity. Yes, I'm looking. It, it, it kind of reminds me, Coach, of, of, of Athens, Greece. When I went to the Olympics in Athens, it kind of reminds me of that, um, going over there. And I'm going to the Paris Olympics as well next year. So I'm looking forward to that. I feel like, you know, the going to Greece and going to London, going to Italy and going to France, like so much you can see in Spain, too. It's like, seeing all that stuff, like, wow, stuff you see in history books, stuff you see you read, read movies like actually go touch it and experience is like one of a kind oh it it's amazing and part of why i wanted to go over there um was you know rome and you look at the different iterations of rome and how a city's been built on top of a city and so for me part of it was the metaphor of saint thomas that we're building a division one city on top of our division three city and uh, so seeing that metaphor right and then the history of places like the Colosseum and vatican city that i think put in context for all of us like where are we really in this world? The 7 billion people, the things that stress all of us out, maybe I got to take a little bit different perspective, but then also juxtapose that with the idea that each one of us makes a difference in the world. And so our players got to see all that. My wife's family, her mom's side is from Italy. So she was there. We had my 18 year olds, a walk on freshman on our team. Our 15 year old was there. We got a two year old baby girl. So, I mean, we were, you talk about travel, we were all up for 25 hours on the way back straight. We had an 11 hour flight from Rome to Charlotte. We had a five hour layover, another flight. So like even that stuff, that's not easy, but the places you're talking about, Spain, Greece, Italy, like the the history and the culture that exists there, um, you know, to me, it really allows for it, a different way of seeing the world. Yeah, so you know, it's very fun. Like I, I enjoy traveling, you know, one of my pastimes to do when I'm doing this, when the Hawks are playing, I get these five months to myself, <laughs> go experience life a little bit, you know? <laughs> it's, hey, it's, it's, uh, my wife loves to travel more than I, so she, any weekend we can, she is looking to travel because it just, again, you think about, I don't care what age we are, the amount you can learn by traveling um, is probably exponentially greater than doing the same thing we do day after day after day. And so, to get a chance to do this every four years like the NCAA allows you to, if you can, um, with a group of young people, I, I think they I, I think they're aware how fortunate they were. And I think, you know, moving forward, they're only going to appreciate it that much more. You know, 10, 20 years down the road, I'm sure they'll still be telling stories about the the times they spent in Italy. And I think what helps me, Coach, too, play and travel baseball. So I learned to speak French, Spanish and Dutch from playing travel baseball so, when I was a kid. So going over there, I, 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 I can kind of make my way through because if I'm playing as a kid, <laughs> I know how to speak language. Because it was funny that, you know, as a kid, I'm getting a whole world lesson in mm -hmm. a six-year-old <laughs> travel baseball. That's pretty awesome. Hey, and that, we didn't talk about that, but just the language barrier, right? And we, we did a session uh, my wife came in and, and Chancey put the kids through or our guys, not our kids, uh, like an hour tutorial on speaking Italian, just basic phrases. How are you today? Could I order this? Stuff like that, that, you know, again, it gives them an appreciation for, you know, how many people throughout the world communicate in different ways and empathy. And how do we how do we meet one another halfway, whatever it is in life, whether it's communication, um, just serving others. And so. Um, th those, I think you're, you're hitting on all of it. It's, it's, uh, the list is innumerable. 
And coach, what I tell people all the time, coach, is like for me, we're gonna try my baseball, like we didn't care about each other's race or language or well, six, 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 six year olds trying to have fun and go on the weekends and play baseball. And <laughs> it was there a language barrier between us, yes, but we figured it out at six year old. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that, there's something about sports that brings people together from all walks of life, all ages. And, you know, I think that is that is something that when done well um, and you think about how to progress society. Right. I think about what we're really trying to do. If I look at the mission statement of St. Thomas, it ends with to advance the common good. That's at the end of the day. That's what we're trying to help mold young leaders of the future. And that when sports is done well, that's exactly what happens. Right. You have young kids growing up playing together communicating with one another and they don't think about how they're different they see the similarities and the common goals and it's it's a beautiful thing because coach i had a picture in my office as, as a kid i'm like i say i tell my intern, this is what the world should be it's all different colors backgrounds religions here on this team we were six years old seven years old but we won because we didn't care it was just kids having fun and i missed that experience of you know older i got it got more differently but those travel, those first things I had, coach. It was like, this is what sports is to me. This is what life is. So I've got it my whole life. Like, hey, I know what it is to be just together when it doesn't matter. I've played it. I've had that experience. So I feel like we should we should try to strive for that. I'm trying to tell my interns, my staff, and everybody. Like, I've seen it done the right way as, as a child. Yeah. Well, and hey, think about that. Decades later, the impression that left on you, right? Like sometimes we forget how young kids, like the stuff that happens to them how powerful a lesson it can be and how many times you've spread that message and that love and kindness to other people and you learned it playing youth baseball. And I think that's, you know, again, wins and losses matter. I say it every single day, but as coaches, we've got to keep sight of that big picture that we're really in the business of developing human beings. And the best way to do that is get them to see, you know, being part of a team is like a family and you love your family and it's not always pretty. It's not always easy, but you know, that family, you can, you can trust them. Yes, and that's why I feel like, you know, the Lord's blessed me because, like, from four years old to now, I've been in sports. Meeting guys like yourself, just for sports. Because I say sports has given my whole life and given me everything I have. So sports has really been been my life's calling. I've been able to use use what sports give, use what use what the Lord taught me well as well and help people see the light. Like, this is how we can really live. We can really do what Jesus, Jesus did through sports, and we can apply that to the world. Yeah, much better place. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love your perspective. It's um, it's certainly encouraging. It's a hopeful way to look at it because you think about pros in college, and that's a small percentage, right? The, the millions and millions of kids who are playing in parks and rec and all that, um, if they're learning those lessons the same way you did, you and I did, um, you know, our world will be in a little bit better place when they all grow up to be adults. Yes, sir. And Coach, I must ask you, man, uh, how has scheduling been for you since you're in year three now and you won some last year? Did guys avoid you this year not wanting to play as much? Or is that is it, is it been a little tricky for you, man? Ske I, I will say this. Scheduling has probably been the biggest surprise. Like recruiting is a lot different. Everything's different. But scheduling is probably the most different thing in terms of my expectations. Like it, my associate head coach, Mike Maker, who was the head coach at Marist, um, Division One Maris for a while and Division Three Williams before that, he is on the phone literally every single day working on scheduling. And it, it, it's never ending. And so it's uh, we have our schedule finally for this year, but like Western Illinois left our conference, the Summit League in, in mid-May unexpectedly. So then we had to go find two more games. And it's uh, it, it's fun to put a schedule together because I think, you know, we've got a board with five or six objectives and those go from um, – where do we have alumni that it's going to be a fun place to play? Where will our kids have a great experience? Where will we have competitive games? Let's stretch ourselves against some power five teams. And so you start doing all that and fitting it. It's like a big Sudoku puzzle though, right? Because you do all that and then you got to find a willing partner on the other end and you got to find dates that work. And so, you know, like this year we're going to Marquette, which will be a great game. We're an urban Catholic university. Marquette's five hours away. Last year we played at Creighton. Both of those were top 10 teams in the country what unbelievable experiences for our guys. And so th I think those are certainly things that on the calendar you look at and you say, um, that's going to be a lot of fun. We were up one on Creighton with 10 minutes left last year. They ended up beating us, but we we're on the road. There's 18,000 people. 
and we had four kids starting that two years ago were playing division three basketball and they're looking around this gym like we got a shot here you know and they trade was one shot away from the final four this year we open at berkeley uh, mark madsen who used to play for the timberwolves and he's in there uh, in his first year as the head coach there so games like that are certainly exciting but there's also a lot of regional games that to me those are the ones we need to play um, for our fans from a budgetary perspective. And so we try to do that. We play UW Green Bay, UW Milwaukee, Chicago State, and there are a lot of teams like that as well. So, but the long winded answer scheduling, I could talk for hours because, as you know, um, it's one of the greatest challenges. There's got to be a better way to do it because all of us in college basketball lament it, yet we're all doing it the same way. Now, coach, I won't, I won't say who, but I had to help a couple of our friends schedule, schedule some games this year by, by, by me knowing somebody very, very good. So I, <laughs> I had to broker a couple of games to show the schedule to get, get them done. I was like, come on, the day just worked for you, you work for him, let's play it, play him. It's all good. No, you're right. And some things make just perfect sense. But again, we all look at it from our own perspective, right? So I know the games that I'd like to play. And you give me a wish list, and I'll give you the 15 games that I'd love to play for our program. But that doesn't mean those 15 schools want to play St. Thomas for a multitude of reasons. And so that that is the other hard part. And then you do it all again the next year, the next year. And so um yeah it's it's uh it's a fun challenge to put together a really good schedule but it's never going to be perfect right like when you look at it you're always going to say well i wish this but you know it's 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 really complicated and some of my friends in the nai asked me can i get some some d1 games on my they i don't think they want to play you because you look too good in AI look what up can you get me by you <laughs> Well, I, when we were in Division Three, we we would try to get exhibition games of Division One, and that and that's that, that's the other reality, though, right? Like games have to work for people. So there are some games where it might make sense on paper, but there's not much for one team to gain, right? And you and I both understand that. Where it's like, yeah, probably the game should be played, but you can understand why one school doesn't want to play it. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that's those are just conversations you keep having because they're. Um, I know for our program, there's four or five games that we should play just about every year, but it would take a lot for those to happen. And and I'm sure some people feel the same way about us. And so, um, you know, you you rely on relationships a lot. And, and also, uh, at the end of the day, I do think, you know, you got to play good teams and beat good teams, you know, and, and at large bids, the way even the net rankings go, there are fewer at large bids for non power five, big East power six uh, teams than ever before. And so there is also an element of like, let's let's go balance winning some games and challenging ourselves and providing our student athletes great experiences in locations that our alums are either very present or they're going to want to travel to. And you can't do those with every game, but like Marquette and Creighton, those are two examples for us that are unbelievable because we have a ton of alums in Milwaukee, Chicago area, and it's an easy trip for our fans to make. And Marquette, I just saw they ranked second in the country. So uh, hopefully shock will be nice to us that night. Hopefully you will, Coach. Well, Coach, I'm going to talk to you again. It's been, it's been two years too long, Coach. I promise we'll do this more often. I promise you that, Coach. So it's been, I, I missed that. We had a great chat last time as well, Coach. But I promise you, it won't be two years this time, Coach. I promise. <laughs> hey, appreciate you very much. It was fun to catch up. Thank you. Is that, Coach. You be safe, but I'll see you soon, man. All right. Roll Toms. BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z, sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker dot com backslash bs3 network you are now tuned to bs3 network what's up good people bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs the latest odds lines and matchup reports for baseball boxing golf and more bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, 
when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show. Twitter at Boss Man Show and Facebook Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.